Hello everybody. I'm here today to talk about a franchise that I've always really enjoyed. To make a little review, I don't know if this is a review, kind of a review. Anyway, I'm here to talk about a new game that's come out for the Borderlands franchise. I have always loved the Borderlands franchise. I loved one, I loved two even more, despite how repetitive it was. And I am here today to talk about the new one, the pre-sequel. If you didn't know, the pre-sequel is set in between Borderlands 1 and 2, and it's based around the upbringing of Handsome Jack. Because Handsome Jack wasn't in the first one, if you didn't know. And, and honestly, in my opinion, 2012 was a big year for good bad guys, because there was Voss, there was Handsome Jack. It was a good year for that stuff. Anyway, in light of that, this game is about Handsome Jack's upbringing. And story-wise, what happens is you are Athena. Athena being the character from the first DLC. What happens is you have been captured and you have been basically put against a pole, Joan of Arc style, and <laughs> Lilith, in true Borderlands fashion, has a lot of guns pointed at you. And she tells you to tell your story and how you got there. And for the first time ever in a, in a Borderlands game, you are the bad guy. You're actually on Jack, Handsome Jack's side and you watch as Handsome Jack it's more and more crazy and more and more at the handsome Jack we know him as in Borderlands 2. And that's the first thing I really love about this game. That really, the entire game, the best part about it by most far, is handsome Jack's transformation. It's gradual, it's really cool. Like, it starts off, he seems kind of nice, but you're thinking, he's gonna screw me over, isn't he? He's gonna screw me over. Because you know him for Borderlands 2, you're as suspicious as Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick are. The very, from the very beginning of the game, and I find that cool that you're always thinking he's gonna fuck you over because of how many people screwed he screwed over in Borderlands 2. And then you realize he's actually a cool guy in the beginning of the game. He helps you out. He basically sacrifices himself to save you, but he, he's fine in the end. He gets away, and you meet up with him on the moon of Elpis. Now, then you can be one of four characters. You can be Athena, obviously because you're her. You can be Claptrap. You can be Wilhelm, or you could be Nisha. Now, in respect to story, as I just said, my by and most far, the best part about the story mode is Handsome Jack's transformation. The way he becomes a complete asshole by the end is the best part. And really, quite similar to the first and second ones, it doesn't really matter what character you are story-wise, because either way you learn about every character, Claptrap being being the one in the second game, as you know, is the most obnoxious thing in existence. To some people that's hilarious, to me, that is the most annoying thing ever. Claptrap, in my opinion, was actually the most annoying character in the game. He was simultaneously hilarious and annoying, which, so I actually wasn't Claptrap that much, because the thing with Claptrap is he's amazing in short, do in short doses. Like, Athena, I played mostly because I loved Maya in the second one, and I like and I liked Lilith in the first one, but mostly Maya in the second one, and her playstyle is very very similar to Maya's, except a bit more offensive because she goes relies a lot more on, on melee. So I used Athena a lot. I used Claptrap a bit as well as Nisha. In fact, I played every class a, a bit, but none of my played as much as Athena. I played the whole game through with Athena, and I played like. I leveled up quite a bit with the, I, I leveled up a bit with the rest of them, but I just didn't I didn't feel like I was having that great a time with it because for some reason I just had some strange obsession with the shield and the melee powers. I thought it was just it was so much fun to play as it. Now of course, Athena is my favorite character, so I'm gonna be a bit of biased towards her. But gameplay wise, my main problem with this game is that it's too similar to Borderlands One and Two, which was the problem with Borderlands Two, which is why it didn't get tens off people because it was such a good. But the problem was the story and everything was so similar to Borderlands Two. You were chasing a vault, and even in the end of this, you're chasing a vault. It's very, very similar to Borderlands One and Two, and so it loses your attention on the storyline. Every class is quite similar to Borderlands Two. Now, no, 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 I'm not saying they're similar. I'm saying their initial abilities are. For example, as I just said Athena's ability is a shield she throws it but the way you upgrade it is very very similar to Maya's phase lock as well as Wilhelm his ability is he can throw robots now as you can imagine that sounds a lot like Axton's ability to fire turrets and it's kind of similar of course there's, there's some major differences in the in the trees but it's pretty similar it's a similar idea now Claptrap is very zero-ish now of course he's more of a support and he can give you all these different perks and stuff but really his basic ability, which is the one I'm going to judge him on for right now, he goes invisible and a dancing thing goes in the middle, which is basically Zero's ability. So that kind of disappoints me, and as well as that, Nisha's ability is kind of like, maybe a bit like Red Dead Redemption, where she she her accuracy goes to 100% and she gets a load of weapon buffs. And now this is pretty damn cool, but honestly, as I already said, Athena was my favorite, and I finished the game with Athena. Now of course, 
all the characters are quite different, and some of them are quite new, although I think Claptrap was kind of a wasted opportunity with his ability, so I think like they could have given him a funnier ability than just basically a zero copy. So mainly in this game, I find that the the gameplay is quite similar. Like honestly, the guns aren't that different from Borderlands 2 and 1, but I can't expect that much different because this is a, this is the pre-sequel. It's between the two of them, so the technology and the weapons will be about the same. Now, of course, another another as a few aspects that have been added are firstly slags gone. Now, there's there is a the reason for that is just story. Story dictates it because the vaults haven't been opened yet, so therefore slag hasn't been mass produced yet and put in guns. So instead, there's frost damage. Now, I actually quite like frost damage. I actually like it more than slag. I use slag a little bit, but I use frost a lot in this game because, as you may imagine, frost doesn't do as much damage as fire or electric damage, but what it does instead is it, it freezes them solid, which makes it so they can't move or attack you back while you're, while you're causing constant damage to them. I like that the most, and in fairness, I hope they keep that in the next Borderlands installment. And of course, the other addition is the oxygen tank. Now, the oxygen tank, I didn't like as much. Now, people, people are saying it's really like probably the most innovative thing in Borderlands lands that there's this oxygen tank and the whole idea that you can slam down with your crouch and you can and you can double jump that was all cool i used the double jump constantly i only used the slam when in a side mission it asked me to do so like that was the only time i ever used a slam rarely because i just found that floating around is just as effective but the double jump i use constantly i use the double jump like almost every time because it's just it gets you around a lot faster and i liked that but th the problem in my opinion with the oxygen tank is if you weren't outside that much it wouldn't be so bad but you're outside a lot in my opinion it's an anchor because it, it might it always makes you conscious of the oxygen tanks around you and you never think oh i can just run around and kill some stuff now no you're always a little bit self-conscious about where an oxygen tank is, where do you have to go to get an oxygen tank, are you running out yet? In fairness, it isn't that bad if you run out, you just lose health slowly, but if you're facing enemies, it's horrible, because you're, not only are you getting, like, getting corrosive and frost damage from all these assholes, you're also losing constant health because you didn't keep enough attention to your oxygen tank. Not to mention, your vision gets blurry, which, that makes, so it makes it harder, if you're down, to see anything. It's, it's little things like this to make it, that make the oxygen tank just feel like a horrible, horrible addition to the game. I actually hated the oxygen tank purely because it felt like there was just it was just an anchor for you that you had to constantly look around for O2 tanks and just go, okay, it's over there. So if I run out, I have to run all the way back, refill my oxygen, and then come back again. Honestly, that was the most annoying thing about this game in my opinion was the horrible oxygen tank. I think the one main it's funny though, the one main addition in this game is the oxygen tank and I hated the oxygen tank. Now what I think of the moon of Elpis is it's a little bit dull. Like, the Moon of Elpis, it's, it's, it's nice. I like it. But then again, Pandora is dull as well. I never liked the, I never wanted to explore the world of Pandora. And it's a little bit similar with this. I did, I don't feel like exploring the world of Elpis. Like in Skyrim or any of those kind of games or Oblivion, I always feel like that, that it's a part of Tamriel and I have to explore it. Or in Fallout, there's Washington, I want to explore it. But this is just kind of, it's all like wasteland full of crap that's going to keep trying to kill you. And it's constant waves of them. And it's not that fun. I know that's very similar to Borderlands 1 and 2. But that's the one thing that I didn't like in Borderlands 1 or 2 as well, because I feel like they're just kind constantly around you. Now, in light of graphics, as you can see, it's Borderlands. Like, the problem with, Bo the problem with Borderlands is that in the first Borderlands, the art style was so unique. It was so different that when you look at this Borderlands, you're like, it's it's the exact it's the exact same. It's it's not, it's you can't add that much. Sure, the textures are quite uh, are a fair bit nicer, but at the end of the day, it has that like sideways alternate stylized look. And that will always look similar, no matter how much shit you add to it. It's an it's a next gen game. You have to realize I have to realize that for console players, and it's just it doesn't feel that next gen purely because it's the same art style. So graphics wise, it's pretty similar to the old games. But I'm not complaining that much because I I didn't mind the art style for the older games. Now. The question everyone's asking, and I, a question everyone has in their minds is, what about the guns? What about, are there, gu are there guns? How many guns are there? Is there going to be guns? Guns, 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 Yes, there are plenty of guns. Now, I was never that impressed with the amount of guns in this game, because, yeah, the guns do a lot more cool shit now. Like, like there's laser guns, which are awesome, because they, they're actually my favorite kind of gun, and for, like, ages, it was the only gun I used. Even when, like, there were levels above me, I could still, like, wreck them, because it did so, they did so much damage, some of them. The laser Laser fire ones are fine, but the rapid like the rapid like laser is like the best gun in the game. It's ridiculous. If you get a high damage one of those, like the one Moxie gives you, you just kill shit for like 10 levels. It's ridiculous how powerful they are. Anyway, another question that might be in your mind is is the humor still there? And yes. Get 
toss your corpse onto a jump pad and watch it take to the air like a child's imagination. The humor is still here. It is so, so good to still have humor around these kind of games. Like, honestly, I found it kind of hilarious in some of the humor in this game. Honestly, the, it wasn't as, it was a bit more sparse and far between than Borderlands 2, but in my opinion, that's a good thing. Unless you're Claptrap, then, then, it's, then he just constantly says stupid shit and it's just, it, it, it gets irritating by the end. But if you're someone serious like Athena, and you play and you play and you find someone hilarious, it's more rare to have humor, so when you do have humor, you laugh a lot more. Like, I kind of smirk whenever Claptrap made a joke in 2, but in this, when someone makes a joke, I burst out laughing, because it's just, it's mid-game, and you're playing seriously, and you're just like, you realize you're playing Borderlands, you're like, oh, I'm actually playing Borderlands, well, why, why am I playing seriously, this is, this is, this is Borderlands, oh god. Now the last thing I'm going to talk about, which was a fairly prominent thing in Borderlands 1 and 2, was the boss battles. Now the boss battles, in fairness, they're all Australian, as well as every NPC in this game, every new NPC is Australian, and the, honestly, uh, I like to imagine that Elvis to Pandora is basically what Australia is to everywhere else in the world. <laughs> <laughs> now I know this is completely untrue, and I know the real reason for this is because Gearbox didn't actually make this game, which explains why it's a bit too similar to the other Borderlands game, 2K Australia made it. Basically the guys who made Bioshock 2, XCOM Declassified, I suppose it's in a right repertoire, but it's, it's, I know, I'm not gonna brag about it. Anyway, as of getting on to the boss battles, they're good, yeah, and I enjoyed them. Some of them are more challenging than others, especially the last one, oh my god, the last one, the last one was just like, he's dead, no, he, no, 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 he's not dead, he's back again, okay. He's basically freaking Kefka, except I suppose not as bad as Kefka, but you know, he's he's pretty bad. Like he's like there's like so many stages to him and you keep thinking he's dead and then he's not dead and you get more and more angry and you just end up saying Why won't you die? Plus the ending plus the ending is slightly anticlimactic. I thought I I, I I thought it wasn't over when like Handsome Jack makes the reaction, you're like, is there more? No. This is this is kinda it. Also, the ending ending giving no spoilers, kind of bonkers. I looked at it, I was kind of like, what? 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 Uh, oh, oh, okay. Sure, sure. Oh, credits. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's, that's great. That, 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 that's Borderlands the pre-sequel. It was a good game, but it was a bad note to end a good game. Anyway, to recap, the best part is Handsome Jack and his rise to power and how he turns evil, and it's by far the best part. And the worst part I'd say it's either the ending, depending on your view towards it, if you played the game, or the oxygen tank system. The oxygen tank system, I actually liked the least. I thought, it, you could tell it was them trying to be innovative, but I think they went a bit too far, and they just turned it into an anchor for you. Anyway, that's it. If you like what you saw, then I'll see you next time. If you didn't like what you saw, then I won't see you next time. I'll be making Far Cry 4 next time, or maybe a game before that if an indie game comes out. Anyway, bye.